Now we get into the Immelman, and you notice the progression of what we talked about. First, we talked about the loop, and that was an extensive conversation just because the loop is the basis of so many other maneuvers, because most everything else is a, a portion of a loop in some cases. Okay? And notice that we went from the loop right into the half Cuban 8, and then we're going to do, go into the Immelman. And from a training point of view, one of the reasons is because when you are starting to do the, the half Cuban, and you come over the top, and then you come up with a downhill uh, path, and then you do your roll. And when a person is new, they don't have finesse exactly on how they do the roll, okay? But they have enough energy to do it because they're on a downhill slope. Here, on the other hand, is where we can have just a little bit of danger, and, and that's because when you get to the top here, you're at a very slow airspeed, and then you're trying to, to roll the airplane. Okay, so you're displacing all the controls uh, in such a way to where here's a good place to get into an inverted spin situation. Now, most airplanes have uh, natural stability, and they will resist departing controlled flight for a short window of time. And so, anytime that you're in training and learning how to do these maneuvers, or even once you're experienced, if the airplane is not doing what you expect, the second the airplane is doing something that you did not expect, Abandon the maneuver immediately and aggressively center the, the rudders and aggressively center the stick in both pitch and roll. And the natural stability of the airplane will keep the airplane from departing in uh, controlled flight into some sort of a, a spin uh, event. Okay? And so usually the only reason an airplane will spin is because the pilot has put in an offending input of some kind. Okay? So reduce all the offending inputs, aggressively center the rudder and the stick, and you should be fine and the airplane will stop doing what it was doing. The heavy end will seek the center of the earth, and once the airplane is going downhill, um, you'll get correct airflow over the flight controls and everything will be fine. And of course, we always make sure that we do maneuvers up high, not low, okay? So that you'll have more than enough room to do a recovery. Okay, so you can see why we did the progression from the loop and then into the half Cuban, where when you're doing the roll, you're learning it on a downhill line. Now we're just going to take that line and raise the line, this top line, from a downhill slope to level flight. And so then you're going to be fast here, slow here, doing your roll while you're slow, and then flying out in level flight while slow. So the judging standard on a level line is center gravity track. The judging standard in any looping segment is the center gravity track of your center gravity dot. And then, here we're back to a level flight line, so you're being judged by center gravity track again. So here, you're going to be going fast. And so, you'll have a fairly nose-low attitude, so you've got to make sure that you're not climbing or descending. A lot of people, uh, when they're going fast, they don't realize that they're on a slight climb. So you've got to be careful about that. When you're up here, on the other hand, and you're really slow after you've done your half roll, your nose has to be high enough so that your center of gravity track is level. One of the common downgrades for new people is that they will tend to dip right in here as they finish the rolling segment. Okay? So, level flight here. And notice as we talked about the loop before, quarter number one, quarter number two. This radius must be constant from the beginning until the end. And so, again, quarter number one is free. So whatever radius you draw here, you have to duplicate here. And then when you're up here, you need to stop with your nose in the, the nose-up attitude that you would normally need for level flight inverted at that slow airspeed. And then you're doing your half roll. And then you are continuing on uh, in level flight. The other thing that you need to make sure of is that you don't have too much, that you don't have a line between when you finish the loop and when you start the half roll. Now, while you're in your training, I want you to put a line there, just for safety, so that you finish your looping segment, that you kind of find where your level flight line is, and then do your half roll, and then continue doing your level flight. And then as you get better at this, then get rid of this line segment here to where you can uh, finish the top of your loop, and then immediately do your half roll. And so we're going to do a half loop up and then a half roll. And uh, we want to make sure that we don't draw a line between when we finish the half loop 
and start the half roll. You notice I started my half roll when my cowling was about as far above the horizon as I would ordinarily be on a slow roll. Right, right. And we made a course reversal, and we gained altitude, and we lost airspeed. So it's ideal setup for a maneuver that involves uh, l losing a, um, altitude and adding airspeed like a spin. So we'll make a right. course, uh, make a turn, and we'll line up with the same road. Make sure we're lined up with it, and try it once again. Full throttle, and start the pull. Right. And the easy time to get into an inverted spin is at the top there, because when you stop, you got to push, and you got opposite rudder, and you're doing your roll, so you got to be careful that you um, gained about a thousand feet. Yeah, as you're using, because you're at very low energy when you're at the top of the half loop, but as you begin your half roll. 